Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer with me, Jo Lacey, Parish Nurse and Parish Nursing Service Lead on Wednesday, the 7th of December, moving further and further into Advent. So uh, this morning, we celebrate a lesser festival of St Ambrose of Milan. And St Ambrose of Milan was born around 339 in what um, was now Trier in Germany, or Trier, as some people may pronounce. And he was the son of the Roman prefect of Gaul. And following in his father's footsteps, Ambrose embarked on a career in law and politics. And uh, in AD 370, he became the imperial governor of Northern Italy. Uh, and when the um, Episcopal See of Milan became vacant in 374, um, the people demanded that St Ambrose be made their bishop. And the neighbouring bishops and the emperor convinced him to accept this call um, as the will of God. It's a wonderful, um, wonderful um, thought for us today. And today also, is an ember day. And as uh, I think I've described before, the uh, the ember days um, with, within our calendar year are uh, the three days that are set apart uh, in, um, you know, historically, uh, they were set apart for fasting, abstinence and prayer during each of the four seasons of the year. Uh, and the purpose of their introduction was to thank God for the gifts of nature and to teach men, to teach, teach us all, to make use of them in moderation and to assist the needy. So without further ado, let us be quiet for a moment as we come before God. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hand to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 62. And the refrain is, wait on God alone in stillness, O my soul. On God alone my soul in stillness waits, from him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. How long? Will all of you assail to destroy me as you would a tottering wall or a leaning fence? 
they plot only to thrust me down from my place of honour. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their mouth, but in their heart they curse. Wait on God alone in stillness, O my soul, for in him is my hope. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my strength and my glory. God is my strong rock, in him is my refuge. Put your trust in him always, my people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. The peoples are but a breath, the whole human race a deceit. On the scales they are altogether lighter than air. Put no trust in oppression, in robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God spoke once, and twice have I heard the same, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to their deeds. Wait on God alone in stillness, O my soul. O God, teach us to seek security, not in money or theft, not in human ambition or malice, not in our own ability or power, but in you, the only God, our rock and our salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah, chapter 47. And we're reminded through Isaiah, the great prophet, that God is Lord of all. And we're encouraged to keep in close relationship with God and to keep his pattern of life. And in this way, the people, all of us, will be led home. So Isaiah 47. Come down and sit in the dust, virgin daughter Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, daughter Chaldea. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the milestone and grind meal. Remove your veils, strip off your robe, uncover your legs. Pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered and your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, daughter Chaldea. For you shall no more be called the Mistress of Kingdoms. The Mistress of Kingdoms. I was angry with my people. I profaned my heritage. I gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the aged, you made your yoke exceedingly heavy. You said, I shall be mistress forever. So that you did not lay these things to heart or remember their end. Now, therefore, hear this, you lover of pleasures. Who sit securely. Who say in your heart, I am and there is no one beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, or know the loss of children. Both these things shall come upon you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and the widowed shall come upon you in full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and the great power of your enchantments. 
you felt secure in your wickedness. You said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge led you astray. And you said in your heart, I am, and there is no one beside me. But evil shall come upon you, which you cannot charm away. Disaster shall fall upon you, which you will not be able to ward off. And ruin shall come on you suddenly, of which you know nothing. Stand fast in your enchantments and your many sorceries with which you have laboured from your youth. Perhaps you may be able to succeed. Perhaps you may inspire terror. You are wearied with your many consultations. Let those who study the heavens stand up and save you. Those who gaze at the stars and at each new moon predict what shall befall you. See, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. No coal for warming. Oneself is this. No fire to sit before. Such to you are those with whom you have laboured, who have trafficked with you from your youth. They all wander about in their own paths. There is no one to save you. For the word of the Lord, we give thanks to God. Our second reading, our Old Testament reading, is taken from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 13 to the end. And in Paul's letter, in this letter to the Thessalonians. As we know, Jesus came to establish a kingdom that was not of this world, but in it. And we're reminded to live as citizens of that kingdom, knowing that the full glory is still to come. So here's Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, 13 to the end. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God, that you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of the churches of God in Jesus Christ, between Judea, for you suffered the same things from your own compatriots as they did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. They displease God and oppose everyone by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. Thus, they have constantly been filling up the measures, the measure of their sins, but God's wrath has overtaken them at last. As for us, brothers and sisters, when, for a short time, we were made orphans by being separated from you, in person, not in heart, we longed with great eagerness to see you face to face. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, wanted to again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? It is not you. Yes, you are our glory and joy. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm now going to read for us the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. Please feel free to join me. And the refrain is, those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens 
and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet, the Most High. For you, you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. I'm now going to offer some prayers, some intercessions. And firstly, let us share our benefits, mission prayer for growth. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, to our church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our community. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son Jesus is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Redeemer of the human race. Redeemer of all of us, Lord. We are Jesus' people. And we wish to be more close to you, united with Jesus in all we say and do. Lord, search the heart of each one of us. As we pray and worship you, Lord, in our day-to-day -day lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for peace in the world. And again, we bring before you the people of Ukraine and the innocents of Russia, Lord. We pray for peace. We pray for peace across the world. We pray for, for people within so many communities and so many countries of the world, Lord. We're experiencing dreadful hardship at this time, cold and hunger, some soaring temperatures, Lord. We pray for their safety, 
and that they may find and share a faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all our friends and family, all those close to us. And we think particularly of friends and family we may not be able to get together with over Christmas, Lord. During this time of Advent, we think of them and hold them particularly close to us in our hearts, Lord. We think of people who are ill, people who are suffering in body, mind and spirit, Lord. We know who they are. Let us have a quick time of silence as we bring all those we know and love before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who have died and for those who are grieving their loss, the loss of loved ones, Lord, for people who are feeling lonely and isolated, Lord. For people who who maintain their strength of faith, Lord, despite all the challenges that many are experiencing. And we thank you for their faith. Lord, we thank you for our faith. And please guide us to help us strengthen our faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our Blackwater benefice. We thank you for all the wonderful services, all the wonderful sense of community across our seven parishes, Lord. All the events that have taken place over Advent that have been shared and enjoyed by so many and for all the work and effort that so many have placed in preparing for these very special occasions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our new King, King Charles III, and for all the royal family at this time. And we, pr we pray for, for all those in the royal family who are grieving the loss of our wonderful Queen Elizabeth II, Lord, who died very recently. And we hold, we hold them in your prayer, in our prayers to you to, today. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we finish, I'm just going to share a beautiful reflection that was offered to, to parish nurses and parish nursing leads by our National Charity Parish Nursing Ministries UK and written by a wonderful man, Andrew Marfleet. Relating to Advent. Does Advent mean more than opening a special calendar in December? Possibly filled with lots of goodies. Our local supermarket is selling them with 24 different cheeses leading up to Christmas. And you can sample 
many, many different flavours of cheeses, including gin, in fact. But we know that Advent is not just a warm-up act for Christmas. It is just as much about Jesus' second coming. It is all about Jesus' second coming. We still await all he came to bring. For many people, this Christmas does not look like offering much cheer. And I know in parish nursing ministry that so many people are struggling to find food and to keep warm, and many are lonely. And I also know that provision for health and social care is very, very stretched. And in so many ways, when we hear the news, the world seems a dangerous place. But Jesus came to bring good news to the poor, freedom to prisoners, sight to the blind, and release to the oppressed. As we learn in Luke's Gospel, and I particularly refer to chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. And in Andrew Marfleet's piece, he's summed all this up very well in a beautiful Advent hymn, which I'm going to read to you. Hark, the glad sound, the Saviour comes. The Saviour promised long. Let every heart prepare a throne and every voice a song. He comes, the prisoners to release in Satan's bondage held, the gates of brass before him burst, the iron fetters yield. He comes from thickest films of vice to clear the mental ray and on the eyeballs of the blind to pour celestial day. He comes the broken heart to bind, the bleeding soul to cure, and with the treasures of his grace to enrich the humble poor. Our glad hosannas, prince of peace, thy welcome shall proclaim, and heaven's eternal arches ring with thy beloved name. And now we've entered this season of Advent, we may indeed prepare a throne for him in our hearts and praise him in grateful song. Thank you, Parish Nursing Ministries UK. Thank you, Andrew. Our collect for this morning. God of hosts, who called Ambrose from the governor's throne to be a bishop in your church and an intrepid champion of your faithful people, mercifully grant that as he did not fear to rebuke rulers, so we, with like courage, may contend for the faith we have received through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks.
be to God. Thank you for joining me in morning prayer this morning. I think uh, I will have one more morning prayer before Christmas Day. And I wish you a blessed Advent and a wonderful week ahead and weekend. God bless. <laughs>